Moving on to the next sport, uh, funny story here today. Two Miami legends, one being Dwayne Wade and the other being our guy, Rick Ross. Um, <laughs> oh, God. So in the inaugural episode of One for One, which is uh, GQ magazine, uh, okay. two of Miami's biggest bosses, Dwayne Wade and Rick Ross, talked possibly owning an NFL team together. What do you think about this? <laughs> oh, my gosh. First of all, yes, two Miami legends. This is de- this is cool to me. This is definitely something I I love when like it's always cool when like rappers and athletes have like friendships and then they kind of they do these types of things. Can you imagine Rick Ross in a locker room with a with a with a player with like a locker room filled of players? I mean, can you imagine that locker room with Rick Ross? That would be tremendous. I love this. I, I, you know, for God's sake, they probably can both play on the Miami Dolphins at this point. That's how terrible they are. But um, I, I thought that this this would be a really cool idea. And, and to have, you know, a, a basketball player and a rapper kind of be able to own a team at the same time, kind of have that business partnership, I think that would be really cool for the NFL, really cool for them, and, and it's really cool to me. Yeah, I mean, uh, if this happens, say, for example, you know, for the sake of the story, they buy the Dolphins, right? Yeah. How cool would it be that, you know, Miami's got one owner in baseball, the Miami Marlins, Jeter. Then you got another in the MLS, uh, David Beckham owns that team. And then you got mm. Dwayne Wade and Rick Ross owning, like, the wow. That's got to be the best ownership in any city ever. <laughs> that's a really good point. That is. I mean, that's just, that's the cream of the crop when it comes to owners. You got Jeter, Beckham, Rick Ross, and Dwayne Wade. Are you kidding me? That is, I mean, that is uh, amazing. Yeah, and I know Miami is your city, so those are some. That'd be a good team. <laughs> they put a good team on paper. I'll tell you that. Yeah, they would. They would. That's that's very interesting. Good story. All right, good job today, Matty boy. I hope everything is well with you, and we will talk to you next week. Yes. All right, we're back here, Strom Sports Show, the last segment of the show. Some people say it's their favorite. Some people can't stand Hick. But uh, today we are here to, and you have this when it comes to sports gambling. You have these types of days. You have these types of weeks. You have these types of Sundays now as football season is here. Uh, Michael, how you doing today? Not the best week, but that's why there's week two. It's bounce. It's let's let's call it bounce back week. It's bounce back week here for the Strong Sports Show. Yeah, I mean it's basically preseason, right? So week five is in the real regular season. Stuff, right? <laughs> yeah, correct. Exactly. That's that's how I think we're gonna take this today. Week one. I mean, do they not say that week one is the most hard? It is the most difficult to predict. I think they do say that in the gambling world. I think. Yeah, so it's the overreaction. Just. You know, living it up there on week one. Lamar Jackson is a Hall of Fame quarterback. You know, the Browns are going to go over 16 again. It's, just, it's a great time to be alive. It really is. Right, right, right. And, and I think that's what we took. It's overreaction one, uh, week one. And there's a lot of overreaction with Lamar Jackson. Hence, there's going to be a lot of overreaction with our picks. So, obviously... That's why we struggled. So let's go to week two here. New life. Bounce back week here on the Strom Sports Show. Hicks, picks, R3. We went and and struggled here. I'll, I'll give you last week's really quickly. I had the Jets minus three. <laughs> they were up 16 nothing completely. I mean, when I tell you vomited on themselves, that's what they did. I had the Chiefs. That was easy. The Browns no-showed. And for Hick, he had the Saints minus seven and a half. He had the Lions who, I mean, he should be two and one this week, Hick. But, I mean, the Lions, we won't get into it. I've never seen – Hick is a very emotional uh, – I'm sorry. He's a very, um, you know, fair fan. He was not happy. Not happy at all after that Cardinal game. And then he had the Vikes minus three, his best pick of the week. So let's get into it here. New week, new life. I'm going to have a new strategy this weekend, Mikey boy. You know, I looked up some stats, and I said, you know what? I'm not going to go with Steven's noggin anymore. I'm going to go by the numbers, okay? You know how you're a mathematician over there at Penn State? Yes, but you know how you're a mathematician over there, so I thought I was going to give you some numbers. Since 2015, Michael, teams that play both week one and two on the road are 2-13 straight up, and they are 1-14 in against the spread who are the two teams that are playing back-to-back road games the indianapolis colts head to tennessee give me tennessee and then also you have the san francisco 49ers who barely eked out a victory against tampa bay i mean that was tampa bay is terrible 
Uh, they barely beat Tampa Bay. They go to Cincinnati, and Cincinnati put up a pretty damn good fight against Seattle. So first one, let me get the Tennessee Titans minus three at home against Indianapolis. I liked what I saw from Jacoby Brissett. It was a valiant effort by the Colts. Give me the Titans minus three. I know I'm giving you my first two. Well, usually we go back and forth, but I'll give you my second one. It is the Cincinnati Bengals minus a point and a half against the San Francisco 49ers. Bengals minus one and a half, Titans minus three. Michael. You know, see, for my first pick, I'm just going to roll with momentum. You know, getting one right last week. I'm going Vikings plus two and a half. I know it's a road game. It's in Lambeau. It's never easy. Uh, but I think the Vikings looked really, really good last week. And I'm just not sold on the Packers. I think both of us said that last week that Mitch is just super underwhelming. And then at that game, mm. it was just so mm. bad on Thursday night. I don't think the Packers are that good at all. I think the Vikings can take care of them. And so to get them at a plus two and a half, I'll take that. It's going to be a win for them regardless. Okay, well, another, I, I hate when Mikey picks him, but he's undefeated so far in 2019. I agree with everything that he said. Interesting stat here on the Vikes. They are 4-0-1 in their last five games against the Green Bay Packers. So I'm sure the Packers know that statistic, and I'm sure they're going to be coming out on fire uh, today. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that. I like that pick, though, for many reasons. My last one, once again, I told you my first two because I went on the whole statistic of if a team plays on the road both week one and two, I'm just picking the opposite after that 1-14 and against the spread record. I'm going to take the Atlanta Falcons, and you're probably thinking to yourself, what are you, crazy? They just got stopped by the Vikings, and a lot of people like the Eagles better than the Vikings. I think Atlanta is not as bad as they showed on Sunday. I think the defense was just that good and that energetic. I mean, they were just flying all over the field. This is an Atlanta Falcons team with Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, Mohamed Sanu, Calvin Ridley. They've got a really good team. I really think that... And they're a much better home team. We understand this than a away team. That's always been Matt Ryan's kind of kryptonite that he's a, he's an unbelievable home team, um, uh, home player compared to the road. So I'm going to take the Falcons here plus one and a half. Anytime I can get an underdog at home, I like those points. Give me the Falcons plus one and a half. They don't want to start 0-2. I like what I saw from the Eagles yesterday, uh, last week. Kind of sloppy in the first half. But give me the Falcons plus one and a half at home. You know, Steve, those are all great stats, and stats are stats. But, you know, there's nothing better than a good old gut feeling. Uh, last week was just, uh, you know, the overreaction week. And like I said, the Ravens were on top of that. I'm going to go Cardinals plus 13 and a half. Emotional, emotional pick. Loss. Wow. That's and an emotional no, pick. No, 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 no. a loss. I don't think the Cardinals can beat the Ravens, but I do not think the Ravens will look as good as they did. I know it's a home game, but that was versus the Miami Dolphins. I think the Cardinals are better with Kyler. Better, not by much. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do think that they will come back and they'll make it somewhat close. The Ravens are notorious for kind of letting these teams hang around. They're not going to blow you out of the water. This was a very rare week one for them. Uh, so I will have the Ravens winning, but I will take the plus 13 half. Okay, I, you know, I thought that was an emotional pick in the beginning. It may still be, even though you're not picking them to win straight up. I like your I like your take on the Baltimore Ravens because they typically do that. When they're big-time favorites at home, they usually play down to the competition. I'll be curious to see how Kingsbury does against that Raven defense. Give me your last one here, Hicks, since I did my first two to start off. What's your last pick? See if we can get hot here. I mean, I'm cheering. We're cheering for both of each other. We need to go a good five and one this week. What do you got for your last one? Yeah. So if you thought my last pick was emotional, get ready for my last <laughs> third pick. Stop uh, it. You know, dis disclaimer to start. Every single year, I am so excited for football to be back, and yet every single year, I forget the emotional toll that this league has on me week after week after week. <laughs> uh, so, Lions in general being a fan of that team. I have seen 0-16. I've seen losses on a Hail Mary. I've seen 10-second runoffs. I've seen picked up flags. I've seen missed penalties not being called. Every single way that this team just comes out week after week, they surprise me, and they do that with a tie. That being said, new week, new us. I'm going to take the Lions plus two and a half. Oh, my <laughs> Home opener in the den. Uh, Baby Gronk is going to be back at it again in front of the home crowd. Carry on, uh, get a good load. 
You know, I love it. Uh, Melvin Gordon's holding out. Derwin James is out. Russell Coon is out. Uh, Hunter Henry is out. Uh, this is a beat-up Chargers team, and the Lions are going to have a chip on their shoulder. You know, you don't poke the line in the den. Oh, my God. That, that is gold. First of all, that's a promo alert, number one. Number two, I actually don't hate this pick because – We've always said this, Heck. The Lions are the most hit-or-miss team. They can go out, and they can go beat the Patriots at home last year pretty handingly, and then they can come and they can choke up a double-digit lead in the fourth quarter. I actually kind of like this pick. You're getting a you're getting an underdog home team. The Chargers are battling injury. Stafford actually looked really good last week. And also, Phil Rivers doesn't really play well on the road, and this is going to be a West Coast team traveling. They're going to have to play. So what is that? If it starts at 1 o'clock, okay, so it's only – is it a two-hour difference? It is a two-hour difference. But, um, you know, I, I do like that pick. It's, it's very – this is emotional week for Hick, and let's be honest here. This was a Cardinals pick where he was very upset. He's going to pick the Cardinals to feel better about himself, and now he's laying all hope with the Detroit Lions, which it usually never ends well for Hick. But – I, I like this, Mikey boy. I really do. Yeah, I mean, will this pick blow up in my face? Probably. I'm an old dog. You can't teach me new tricks. Lions <laughs> disappoint me. I run right back to them. It doesn't matter. Uh, will this pick blow up? Absolutely, but I am ready for it. I'm pumped up, man. Week two, now it starts. It's the home opener. Who cares? Like, It's the Cardinals. It's Arizona. We don't care about the West Coast. We're worried about the East. You know, We'll take care of that. And... Uh, that's all you gotta say. You know, I'm just ready. Wow, what a what a performance today by Mikey. Was ready, came out of his economics class, ready to go, revved up, and he, it's emotional. It's emotional Sunday here for Mikey and the fellas. Anything else? Penn State, good. What do they who do they play this weekend? Uh, it's pit week, Steve. So uh, oh. it's like a blowout, a blowout in that one. Uh, pit just can't hang with us. That's okay. Okay, all right. So you heard it here from Hick first. Gave us his three picks. Hopefully we're better than last week, folks. We really do apologize. It's week one, though. You know, we talk about it. It's overreaction. It was an overreaction for people to think that we're not very good at picks. You're looking at two guys that finished over, I mean, well over 500 last year. So let's not worry here. Week two, new week, in review. Titans, Bengals, Falcons, and for Mikey Boy, Vikes plus two and a half, Cardinals plus thirteen and a half, and the Lions minus a plus two and a half. And a big thanks to Brandon Morton, my producer, Jim Suhan. If you want to advertise with us, just go on our website, talknorth.com. Thanks you everyone for listening. I really appreciate the love. I do it for you guys. I love it. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at SSTROM32. Also, check out our shows on the whole network. Michael Russo, John Krasinski, Cheryl Reeves, Roy Smalley. As we approach baseball, you better get on that Roy Smalley podcast as we get to the MLB playoffs. But once again, big thanks to everyone who came on the show today. Mike Spofford, Mike Hickman, Matt Augusta, and everyone else involved. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you next Sunday.